now, of course, for many is, is Royal LePage right? Would another rate cut actually hurt, not help the Canadian housing market? So let's get another perspective here from the industry. Now with us is Hilliard Macbeth. He's the author of When the Bubble Bursts, Surviving the Canadian Real Estate Crash. He joins us now from Edmonton. Uh, great to be with you today, Hilliard. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Catherine. Interesting comments from uh, Royal Page CEO. What do you make of uh, the potential for another rate cut? Do you think he's right? Do you think that that would hurt the housing market here in Canada? Well, it's a little bit hard to understand exactly what he's saying. I think what he's saying is that there's a bubble and it, it would make it worse if Bank of Canada cut interest rates even further than they already have. But, you know, the main um, channel of transmission of of monetary policy is through the housing market so that's what the Bank of Canada usually targets when they target now their main goal really in the Bank of Canada is to regulate the currency and credit markets of Canada not to control the housing bubble in Toronto and Vancouver so I'm not sure that the, his comments really make very much sense what do you think would make sense though for the Bank of Canada well, I think the Bank of Canada has to look at the broader picture. That, 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 you know, the, the economy is quite weak, especially in Western Canada, because of the oil and gas and energy markets. And it is going to spread across Canada. It's not an isolated thing just to Alberta. And so they've got to be taking that into consideration. And I'm sure they are. And uh, there's other ways to regulate the housing market. There's uh, CMHC, there's OSFI, the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions. And they really should be the ones that are worrying about a housing bubble in, in Toronto and Vancouver, not not so much the Bank of Canada. You know, you're, uh, but, it, but it's all part of the same equation in many cases. And the CMHC has also taken some action to try to slow down the housing market boom that we have had here. Well, you know, the banks are still lending us uh, anecdotally, talking to young couples in Edmonton and Calgary and Vancouver. Uh, they're willing to lend up to five to six times uh, annual combined income of two young people recently married. And that's just unprecedented. That's never happened before. And I, I, I can't even imagine how we got into the situation where that is the actual policy of the banks, uh, of the, charter, the major charter banks account. And I know it's because they can offload the risk on the CMHC. So really the, the government policy through CMHC is probably where they need to, to look at this. Hilliard, what's your view right now of the Canadian housing market? In the past, of course, you said that there is a, a bubble. Um, what gives you confidence that there is, in fact, a bubble? Well, for sure there's a bubble. The, the house prices against incomes are just completely stretched. Uh, the gains in house prices are, 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 are unique and unprecedented going back 200 years. And so either a recession or rising interest rates would be enough to puncture the bubble. Um, you know, it's, it's unlikely that we're going to get rising interest rates because we have quite a weak economy in Canada and, and generally in the world, the economy is slowing a bit. So um, a recession where people just find out that they can't afford to take on new risks and uh, take on that much debt. And it really comes down to debt more than the house prices. It, it's, a, it's a debt bubble as well as a housing bubble. Hilliard, what are you watching? What's the metric that you're watching to understand almost where we're at in that process, if in fact you're right? Uh, we, we know that the debt levels are high, but is the metric to watch the employment rate and what that looks like if in fact our economy continues to weaken? Yes, I think the, uh, like for instance, the employment gains, in the, as, as you know, other people have mentioned in your show earlier, uh, are still pretty strong, and uh, it, it's uh, that would be where you'd see the sign. And even in Alberta, actually, uh, the latest uh, numbers, which are a little bit out of date now, showed growth in the employment, which is which is unlikely to continue. It's, we're likely to see some shrinking in, in employment in Alberta. So that that's where it'll show up for sure. And uh, and you know the GDP numbers, uh, you know, are really uh, dependent on exports to the U.S. and to the world. And uh, so we, we need a strong um, economy in the U.S. To, to keep our exports up. And so I also watch the exports really closely. And unfortunately, the non-energy exports have been quite weak lately, which, is, which I think is a surprise to the Bank of Canada. And now if they cut tomorrow, that'll be why. They'll be worried about that, uh, I'm sure. Hilliard, as it relates to the housing market here in Canada, though, a lot of people would say that there is demand for housing, that there is household formation, that there is immigration, uh, that there's a lot of demand factors that will keep these prices uh, where they're at, if not higher. Where does that factor into your thinking? 
Well, you know, I look at uh, the actual growth in the uh, working age population in Ontario. It's at the lowest it's been in something like 15 or 20 years, according to uh, one of the most respected analysts in the housing market, Ben Rabideau. Um, so I don't really buy that. That's those are those are stories that people tell each other to justify a bubble, but there's not a lot of hard data behind it. And of course, as you know, nobody seems to have the numbers on the foreign demand and the immigration mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. So, so it's it's more stories that are being told. But in the reality, uh, housing um, it generally is related to employment and income, mm -hmm. and that's where the the issue will will will, uh, will, will become the the most dangerous is when people, Canadians, don't have the income and the employment to justify such high house prices. Hilliard, great to uh, get your views today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. That's Hilliard and Beth, the author of When the Bubble Burst, Surviving the Canadian Real Estate